Public service announcement time. 3.6.2 just went live. The 890 Jump is on sale war bond for $890 with LTI, 950 for 72 months with credit. Links are in the description. Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. It's Friday and we got Star Citizen Live with Chad McKinney, Brian Chambers and Todd Pappy. A 60 minute plus dump of information that behaved a little bit like pillar talk. Here's what you need to know in four minutes. Staggered development is meant to fix issues associated with being feature driven. Date driven is more likely to be on time, giving time for Evocati, PTU and then live. Specialized ships generate specific game mechanics such as mining, fuel and reclamation. Todd described the path as designing an activity set followed up by polishing the general mechanic. Mining is in progress, salvage is part of gathering, trading is after, and then piracy, security and bounty round out a group of five. Persistent bugs seem to travel from patch to patch without being addressed, but some like the HUD are being addressed with a refactor of the HUD, so it would seem to be a waste of resources. Some others that are seen as a hard quality of life issue will be addressed in the future and then be prioritized. The broadcast was cut and then brought back, and now we talk about server-side OCS. SS OCS and the game engine were never meant to work well together. Because of that, it's taking a building block approach, which was called a multi-year effort. SS OCS requires core engine and core backend. Both have been worked on for the past year, and we were told today that meaningful progress has been made. Object containers are now in dynamic and static. Basically, this means that there are objects that will and won't be streamed in and out of the universe. Star Engine Service and Star Hash Service are bespoke systems that'll handle how the objects are stored and then called up. SSOCS requires global persistence to be made, which is a huge developmental leap. For it to work, both client and cloud services need to communicate quickly and effectively. To test SSOCS, all game disciplines are gonna need to check their code because it's not a matter of if the migration has bugs, but when. It sounds like they would be able to push SSOCS without full persistence by retaining player persistence and then letting the server crash and be reset. There were no dates presented for SSOCS, but they seemed optimistic. Server meshing can only happen after SSOCS. They had said in the past that Microtech couldn't be released without SSOCS. However, they have temporary options involving content swapping. As they don't have a date set for SSOCS, there's still hope that most of Microtech can be launched even if SSOCS isn't implemented. Microtech and New Babbage are still being constructed, so the developers actually still don't know what the performance hit would be. It sounds as if Global Wipes will still be around for some time, despite the discussion of full persistence. Their persistence priority would be that any ships or gear purchased would be dealt with first, then the ability to remember where you may have dropped weapons or parked a ship. To clarify the last, that means between patches, not between game sessions. Those design documents from the past won't likely be common anymore. The evolving state of the game will be presented in informal discussions like Star Citizen Live. So based on that, I'm sure that the original backers already expect this. We can assume that those legacy design documents must be taken with a grain of salt. Fuel refueling and scooping was removed from the roadmap, but it's not gone and it's going to return after some core mechanics are worked on. Vulcan integration is still planned, there was just a meeting about it, and it's going to be added to the game in three stages. Clean up the code, refactor the API, and then implement the Vulcan backend. Ship combat is a known issue that now has a dedicated team working on it. Logging out while away from a bed is possible and it's being discussed. One future idea could be a player's sleeping bag. Locking a ground target is a future feature. A version of 4.0 normally would indicate a huge change in code where some have said it should have been 3.10. Todd Pappy said that the types of changes that may be coming would warrant the 4.0 designation. And finally, Ryan confirmed once Squadron 42 is shipped, there will be a short break, a quick shakedown, and then some of the developers will roll over to develop the PU. There you go, a big old dump of information. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.